guys have all been asking about it. I had a guy ask me just today about it actually. When's the Jeep Rod coming back? When's the Jeep Rod coming back? Today's the day. Here it comes. Woo, look at that. Man, I missed that thing. All right guys, welcome back to the Workman YouTube channel. You can see I got the Jeep here. And if you follow along at all with my channel, you'll see it's on the trailer I built. Or converted, I guess you could say. Um, the other trailer the Jeep was on was my buddy's and he needed it back and uh, he's gonna go pick up some fun stuff for us. We're gonna have two new projects showing up. One for me and one's a customer project. So you guys stay tuned for that. Should be here next week. Anyway, um, this video is all about this guy right here. The Jeep rat rod that I call the Jeep rod. I have had so many questions about this thing and people just just love it. People love seeing it. They want to know more about it. So today we're going to do a video I really pretty much told myself I'd never do. We're going to do a how-to video. We're going to do a how-to build a Jeep rat rod. All right, there's going to be a quick and dirty how-to rat rod. All right, so the basis for any rat rod, Jeep rat rod, rat rod, whatever you want to call it, the frame so let's look at that first all right so my frame is two by five steel now the only reason i went with two by five is well that's what was available at the time some guy had a good deal on some two by five steel and i bought it so my two main frame rails are two by five steel now people have been asking me how did i get my frame width and the way that i came up with that was my axle width here so shoot you guys a little little line on here my frame 36 inches wide, three foot wide. The reason I did that is because of my axle. I knew that my control arms here would need to line up, and that one's crooked because the tire's hitting it. I knew that my control arms here would need to line up with this spot. I knew that I wanted it to be slightly offset of the bolt so I could unbolt it and bolt it, so that's where I came up with three feet. So people ask me now, well, how do you do your kick up in the back? The kick up right there. So, the main thing you need to know there, it just has to fit into your body. So, all I did here was I matched the angle of the upright right here. That's all I did. Doesn't matter. Yours can be more angle, less angle, whatever. As long as you know where you want the back of your seats to sit, that's how your kick-up needs to be. People uh, people ask questions about that all the time. They want to know what angle is it and you know how tall is it and stuff like that. When I did this, the angle that I chose was this angle here, and the height that I chose was this height minus one inch, because I knew I was going to put this one inch uh, tube on top, because I'm going to have a plate back here that lifts and lowers, because I've got my gas tank right there. Battery's going to go right here, I'm going to be able to get to my bag, stuff like that. So, that being said, um, next step would be floor. People are asking me about the floor. How do you do the floor? Well, I cut out every every bit of floor, firewall, back, whatever you want to call it on this Jeep. And the reason that I did that is because, well, for one, it was all rusted. Look right up here and see the card. You'll see where I cut the floor out of it. Um, two, I wanted my floor, or I wanted the, the body to sit lower. So you can see all my uh, my nature's weight reduction here. But anyway, she, she sits right on down, um, pretty much as low as it'll go. And I wanted my floor to to be able to accommodate that. Um, you can see right over there how low the floor used to be and then now where the floor is going to be. So that does mean that my floor is going to be very close to this point, which is fine. No big deal. It's a it's a rat rod. That's supposed to have some fun with it. Nice. How'd you mount the motor? What about the transmission mounts? Well, let's look at them. So right here, I got this strap holding that control arm up. Um, all I did here, and I've got a video on this as well, I have a piece of round tubing there, and I've got some bushings in there, you can't see it, but this is at the angle that the motor needs to be correct at 3 degrees. I took a piece of uh, 1 by 2, let's measure, let's measure, yeah, 1 by 2, went straight down with it, that'll get your, uh, your up and down movement taken care of, and I added this little cross brace here so that the thing doesn't try to move all over the place. And then I fully welded it in. So that's how I got the engine done. Looks pretty snazzy. Transmission cross member here. Basically, all I did was figure out where my mount was going to be. Made this plate video right there. 
and then I welded it to this cross member and then welded the cross member to the frame rails. So it's pretty easy there. All right, so we've got frame covered pretty well. Um, we've got the engine mounts and the transmission mount. So now what's next? Well, let's look at the rear end on it. How about that? All right, so everyone's been asking me about these upper links. When these bars, or when this is all the way aired up, these bars have a slight upward angle to them. Call it right, call it wrong, I don't care. It works. I've already, I've already cycled the suspension. Check the video right here. And it works fine. So that's what we're going to roll with. Another area of concern, these bad boys right here, my lower link. So, uh, it's going to be hard to tell right now, but they are at a slightly upward angle. This point here is lower than that point there, but we are fully laid out. So, when this is at ride height, this bar needs to be parallel to the ground, and this bar is parallel to the ground at ride height. That is what you want for your main, your main lower link should be parallel to the ground at ride height. Your upper links are triangulated this way and this way to keep it from doing, uh, to keep you from any side to side movement and anti squat with the suspension. Once again, I'm no expert on this, but it works. Check out the video there. Another thing's front suspension. Now, I get it, bags aren't for everybody. But if you're running a bag setup, this is what's called a cantilever front suspension. I got a video of how I built this right up there. But basically what that enables me to do is lay full frame all the way on the ground, all the way down without a step up. And then be able to raise it up so that it's not dragging the ground. So, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on this video about these control arms because I already have three videos on them. And I urge you to go check those out because they're pretty cool. But, straight axle. Well, Mason, it's a hot day in Oklahoma. How about a radiator? You got one of them on there? If you look right there, I got a presumably two core, don't really know, it's hard to tell, radiator in there. It is actually specifically for a Jeep CJ7. But it came with these mounting tabs on it, which I don't know are stock for a Jeep or not, but they made it super easy to mount. So all I did was put me a little piece of one by one across there. Remember my frame outside width is 36 inches. So you take two inches off of both sides, you got 32 inches. 32 inch cross piece. And then I figured out where my, or I measured from this bracket to the other bracket over there. And then I welded these uprights on, drilled some holes, bolted it on. Simple as that guys. Rat rods are fun, rat rods are easy sometimes. Now, you caught a little blurb of this, I made this grill. 100% hand drawn, cut it out with my plasma cutter, uh, I'd like to say freehand, but didn't freehand it, I had a template that I made, check out that video right there. Anyway, you don't have to make a custom grill, you can buy a grill you want, but I wanted one that fit my specifications, my, or my distance from here to here, my distance from here to here, where I wanted my lights, a lot of the Jeep grills had a little bit of overlap in the light into this bar, and I didn't really like that. So I just made my own. That's a little bit more advanced than some people are going to do. If you don't make your own, don't make your own. Hey, what about that fuel tank? Hey, I'm so glad you asked, because I actually filmed all the footage for this, and then we were right in the middle of moving. I never ended up uploading it, didn't do anything with it. So we're going to go over it now. All right, so this fuel tank, aluminum fuel cell, just got it off of Amazon. Measures 29 this way by 17 this way, and let's see how deep it is, because I can't remember. It is a whopping seven, we'll say, eight, we'll call it eight just for just for kicks. Eight inches tall. Now, I chose this gas tank after many, many, many hours of research, because I need something that would fit in between that differential and the back of the Jeep body right here. Now, the Jeep body's pushed forward a little bit. It won't actually touch it. But, to make this mount, all I did was I... Welded me in a crossbar from there to there. Once again, 32 inches because overall frame width is 36 minus frame rail on both sides. And then, as you can see down there, I made a frame out of angle iron that goes all the way around the gas tank. And I added these two little lips, one right there and one over there. And then I added these uprights, which is like a three quarter by three quarter steel. And I welded this bolt into this. And then on the bottom, it's the same way. It's welded and then there it is. So. To get the front out, all I gotta do is unbolt right there and unbolt right there and the front comes out. Now you're probably wondering about the back. The back went a little bit different, but basically the same. I got my three quarters uh, square stock right here, welded it, 
And then down below, you can maybe see the washer. Down below, I welded the bolt into it as well, and then bolted it through that little lip that I made. This little piece of angle iron here, just drilled a hole and bolted it straight through. Did that on this side as well. Something got off on my measurements, gotta redo it, no big deal. So, that's how the fuel tank mounts. Now, I haven't done fuel lines yet, but obviously you can see how they got three here. One's a fill, one's a return, one's a vent. I don't know which is which yet, I'll figure it out later. But what I plan on doing is coming up and over, up and over, and then vent, I think is that one. And then I'll run my fuel lines here, along here, and then up to the motor. Well, you got the motor and transmission in there, front end and rear end. What about, uh, like, brakes? Where are you gonna put that pedal at? Well, I went with the conventional Model A style master cylinder under the body. And I don't have it in there yet, obviously, but I got the pedal in. You can see, pedal comes up here. And it has a just regular round pedal that's gonna go there, but I'm gonna go ahead and make myself a new pedal. Don't know what yet, but it's gonna be something about like that. Now that's just about as far as I've got on the Jeep so far. So if you're following me along, you can get yourself up until that point. Then looky there, bing, bang, boom, cut, grind, weld, you got you a rat rod. What are you waiting on? Just get out there and go get you one. Hopefully that helps you kind of get started on either your Jeep rat rod or your rat rod, because this is a Jeep, but your rat rod is gonna be basically the same thing if you're making the frame. The frame width will be dependent on your front axle, because whether you're gonna run a hairpin, a four link, or a cantilever airbag suspension or any other type of suspension, you're gonna need to know how wide your front end mounting points are. And that will determine your frame width. But once you get that, you gotta figure out your frame length. The frame length I did here, I just wanted to make sure that that motor fit up just like that, so that had to clear there, and I wanted to be able to have room to run a mechanical fan. Super simple, it's really nothing. Um, if you'll watch this video up in the corner, that one, if you watch that one, I kinda show uh, the mock-up of the motor and the transmission and how I kind of spaced it where I wanted it to be that way it would be that way I could figure out my frame width but once you get your frame width then you're onto the kick up and the kick up is just dependent on your body your chassis is going to fit your body however you make it fit it so just make the kick up how tall and how whatever angle you need it to be to fit your seats and your rear axle and not stick up above the body where you don't want it to super simple so anyway you guys thanks for watching uh hopefully this answers some questions that you guys might have had about the old jeep rat rod or just about rat rods in general um those of you that enjoyed the rat rod content i appreciate you guys i appreciate you guys commenting uh if you guys got any questions please feel free to ask me but uh i hate to say i don't know when i'm gonna get back on the jeep i've got a lot else going on and i just don't know when i'm gonna get back to it i will get to it eventually but for now we're gonna have to take a little bit of break at other stuff going on so you guys stay tuned for what's next